If you remember what we had 20 years ago, so the diagnosis of lung cancer had only one scheme, and we could avoid detecting if it's a small or non-small cell. It was platinum plus uh, plus But today we have the scheme of treatment that resembles the scheme of Tokyo metros, and we need more than one hour to discuss it all. So we will talk about a very small part of this chart. And of course, if you talk about sm small cell lung cancer, it's a very heterogeneous disease. So the, foc uh, the focuses are in different parts. The metastasis can be in different le levels and of different levels of PDL in those focals, and we need to be very precise about the assessment of the cancer to take biopsy from all the focals to take during the treatment. And remember that it's not some stable, but all, uh, all changing all the time disease. If we talk about squamous cancer, we have different targets there, but they are all uh, in the stage of trials. And first of all, we are interested in adenocarcinomes and, you know, those two mutations. It's ALK and EGFR and the treatment of lung cancer is connected with those mutations. There are lots of reports and presentations and rare mutations are less studied. They are well depicted on this slide. So EGFR, we've got lots of medications. So osimertinib and other unregistered in Russia medications, uh, LK. So the, the medications registered in Russia and the medications that we are waiting for, uh, ROS1, crizitinib, and a series of medications that will be registered in the nearest future. And also BIRAF, the fourth mutation that has registered in Russia therapy. So Konstantin Konstantinich in his first lecture showed the perspectives that we are waiting for. I'll discuss it in detail, rare mutations, like MET mutation. During treatment, grows up uh, for EGFR positive lung cancer. So it grows from 1, 2 to 15%. And if you take the group of patients older than 70 years, so even initially the patients, they, they have the frequency more than 10% of these mutations. And then a very rare mutation, PI3CA, but it was registered in the USA, a medication that can be used in breast cancer with this mutation, and it also has common positive effect, and also rare mutations, and artocardine, red, MEC. I'm sure that in the nearest future we will get some new indications to treat them. So today we're not going to talk much about anti-angiogenesis. 
So we've got medications for that. Those are the medications that really work together with chemo therapy and in targeted therapy as well. For example, for GFARO positive lung cancer. So in general, if we assess the opportunities for treatment and patients with those mutations, this slide shows that presence of those mutations increases the survival rate by 3.5 years compared to the absence of those mutations. We can take data for analysis in different media, biopsy, for example. Of course, we can use serum and urine and um, bone marrow. So we'll start with EGFR mutation. It's quite well known uh, medication that is used, Rvotinib, Fotinib, Difotinib, and Dondrosinib, is quite used today. And the most actual question is what's the sequence of using of these medications? What should we start with? So, should we start with the first generation? And so the survival rate is about 10 months if we start with asimertimib, 19 months. So you can see two conditions are compared. But if we start with the second generation, and we will add angiogenesis uh, inhibitor, we will get even more. As it was shown in different researches, usage of different methods using the inhibitors of the first and second generation with angiogenesis inhibitors gives 14-19 survival rate. And if we add osimertimnib, we will get some advantage. But if we start with osimertinib, we just delay the possibility of progression due to mutation of T790M. So the patients that do not reach second and third line, they get some advantages. ALK. So first of all, how do we pick up the patient with ALK having on the clinical data? It's usually a non-smoking patient of average age, of average age about 55 years, young patients. And if we look for them, not all over the population, it's about 5%, but only about among uh, young non-smoking patients with negative EGFR, of course, e every third will be of that. So I think there are quite many in uh, the Russian Federation, but we miss them because according to our statistical data, every year we have diagnosed about 200 patients with LK mutation. So we, we, we must have more time. Once again, a whole range of medications to treat ALK positive lung cancer, Arabtinib, Silitinib, Crisintinib. So the first one, Crisintinib, that appeared in Russia, and now we've got three medications. As you can see, the recommendations of American association, all four medications can be indicated in the first line in ALK positive lung cancer, as in Russia, we've got the same indications. Some data on the studies that were conducted by the international research group all over the world. So ascent four comparing tertinib to chemotherapy 
so sertanib 750 milligram and compared to chemotherapy was twice as good as chemotherapy so in indirect comparison crizotinib and tiritinib it showed that clinical efficiency is 1.5 percent better and survival rate both in patients with brain metastasis and without brain metastasis it was better because this medication can penetrate the brain can get to the brain and even in preclinical studies serotonin showed to be 20 times more effective and at the same time the medication is quite bearable and if you reduce the dose to 450 milligram that was used in the study it showed that that the smaller dose is as, a, as effective as 750 but it gives less side effects such as nausea vomiting those are the main gastrointestinal disorders so if you reduce the dose that was registered as official helps to use it well in patients here you can see the reduction of side effects depending on the dose three doses were used 750 is the initial dose it was reduced and now 450 milligram once per 24 hours is standard and the second line of therapy is also study of ascent 5 showed also serotonin compared to chemotherapy has large advantages and even in case of progression indication of this medication even not indication but continuing usage will prolong the time without progression of the disease so, so you can see that it has its advantages and once again the recommendations both first and second line of serotonin and crizotinib nowadays are the indications and also I like to know from our economic side nowadays serotonin usage is more economically effective compared to other medications because its cost per month is less than the others we are waiting for the next for the other medications we are waiting for brigantinib that is in extended approach and we've got about 20 patients who receive brigatinib in our clinic in the second line as you remember from the first lecture it's the medication that showed the best results in the second line and also we are waiting for the third generation medication that all the other are of second and lorlatinib is of the third generation and expanded extended approach is legal now and there is big experience of its usage and we are waiting for the results of the third stage that is now going all over the world including in the Russian Federation and we hope that this medication will be registered in Russia uh, it has good permeability to hemoencephalic barrier and a good education indication for brain metastasis ROS1 is quite a rare mutation about one percent clinically they are very similar to LK positive and the medication of choice is uh, tercinib and crizotinib about 19 uh, months survival rate without progression in this impairment they are quite high and 
so Ross 1 and in Crisotinib it's even higher than in ALK positive and those are the two medications registered in Russia that are quite effective. BRAF V600, it's a, rare, uh, it's a rare mutation, usually in melanomas, maybe rarer in colon cancer and quite rare in cancer of lung, but those patients exist and they appeared in our practice. And combination of drabofenib and trametimbib is quite effective here. And I would like to note that it's very important to diagnose these patients at early stage because the patients who haven't received chemotherapy respond better to uh, immunotherapy and have better survival rate compared to patients who already received some courses of chemotherapy. So MET mutation, the data just published. So the study of the second phase relate to MET mutation. And as you can see, the patients respond badly to chemotherapy and immunotherapy despite the high level of PDL and even expression of mutation load. But the response to standard treatment is quite bad. And target therapy treatment is the choice for those patients. Capnoptimib is the medication that at the present time is in the second phase and they're starting the third phase of its studying. It's one of the CMED inhibitors. You can see a whole range and you are aware of crizotimib. And we've got in our practice cases when we indicate crizotimib, when we have met mutations and those patients respond to crizotimib. But nevertheless, the figures uh, when we need minimal concentration of this receptor, they are quite, they are of quite low concentration. It's one of the strongest MET inhibitors because it's very selective. And it affects this MET mutation. There were lots of them in the past, lots of the studies. I'm sure you remember quite well. Tivotinib and its clinical trials, monoclonal antibody by Roche prescribed in different expressions, but the latest research showed that this mutation, deletion uh, in 14th zone is a d d defining for the targeted treatment of these patients. And when we use the therapy, we can get some effect. A few words about the second phase study. We had different, different cohort deletion and replication of MET and fourth and fifth cohorts with deletion. They had patients who have received chemotherapy and who have not. And the fifth, the initial patients had the best effect. You can see this waterfall with quite obvious partial response, 72%. It's quite a high figure for targeted therapy. CMED positive lock gasser. And we will hope that the first phase will prove this data and the chart that we are adding new lines to. We will add CMED. 
and I want to draw your attention to the possibility of combined usage uh, anti-angiogenic uh, drugs with tyrosine kinase inhibitors inhibitors. Due to this synergetic activity, we can promote the data on survival rate. And in conclusion, on our report, as you can see, targeted immunotherapy has reached success. And the sequence has the questions combined regimes and of course we are discussing new data about changes of cancer and pathomorphosis because PDL level can change during the treatment and expression of different mutations that's why we need constant contact with surgeons, morphologists. Uh, we need a multidisciplinary team, including all the specialists, to achieve the best results. Dear colleagues, are there questions to Sergei? The question is not into the mic, unfortunately. Let's have discuss. Everything, apart from erectinib, it's uh, the only substance that doesn't affect MET1. We have the experience of using lornitinib. We have three patients who are receiving lornitinib. We, we do have work and uh, during six months, our patients are without progression.